So this is technique episode two. We're back at Rob's garage. The last technique we did his S2000. I'm Brian. I was behind the camera on the other episode. This is the car. It's a 2008 M3. And from the factory, it has an electronically adjustable suspension. So you can pick between a comfort mode, uh, normal mode and sport. And it changes to how firm the ride is. Problem is when we upgraded the tires to something considerably stickier than the factory tires, the suspension just couldn't cope with it. And so even at full, full sport mode, when we're driving really aggressively, we just get a lot of pitch. So we're gonna replace it with KW coilovers. Normally, like on Rob's car, you manually have to adjust the compression and rebound. On this car, has a really similar system, so you can actually hook up a switch or a Wi-Fi module and use an app to adjust how stiff or how soft the suspension is. Because of that, this, this installation is gonna take about 10 times longer than the one on his car. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Jeff from Moto IQ, and I'm going to be shooting stills for a feature article we're gonna do on this install. And you may also see my arm helping out uh, torque some stuff down in here. Anticlimatic, I was hoping to see it already. <laughs> this is the kit that essentially plugs into the factory computer that controls the shocks and fools it into thinking that they're still there. All right, we're gonna take the wheels <laughs> off. We're gonna jack up the car and then we're gonna do the front driver's side first. We're just gonna remove the ABS sensor, the brake pad. Um, wear sensor, and it looks like this is the brake line off the clip. If I could take this out, right how's it? And stop. Okay, got that guy out. So, right now, we're disconnecting the pickup point for the sway bar on the shock. Okay. Well, now we're going to remove the shock out of the knuckle or front. Suspension. So we're taking off the bottom knuckle on the strut. So Rob is disconnecting the sensor that's basically on the front suspension and it tells the computer how far pitched the car is so that the HID headlights can adjust. So we have to disconnect the actuator. So we're going to be removing the three top bolts and hopefully that will lower the suspension far enough down to be able to remove it. Oh, thank God. I'm just prying it open a little because it's a compression fit into the shock. We remove this and we have to take the top hat off and also the rubber gasket and move it onto here. So in order to do that, we have to compress the spring to release the tension, undo the bolt Move it all over. So then we're gonna put this puppy, and we usually like to look at the indention where it was and try to match it to the new one. So about there. Right there. And then there's another washer. Now we wanna match the marking that I made earlier to the index down there. With our assembly, it's all lined up. I'm gonna clean out the perch area because you know there's dirt in there and obviously since it's a comp compression fit, you don't want any pieces of debris. There we go. How deep? As deep as it can go. I think, I think that's, that's it. it. I removed this bracket earlier and now I'm gonna put it back in where it was. So I'll put it back here. And then this bolt that I removed earlier for the shock, it's just gonna slide it back here. While Brian's going to be lifting up the suspension from the bottom, I'm going to try to basically fit it back into the hole that was in there. Well, let me adjust the perch a little bit. Okay, right there, Brian. It's not like this is heavy or anything. So yeah, take no, your time. No worries. Take, take your time. No worries. <laughs> so we're just going to tighten the top bolts. We're going to put the headlight level sensor back on. We're not going to reinstall the sway bar end, uh, end link for now because of the fact that it's probably a shorter shock body, so the soy bar end link's probably gonna be moved a little bit because the other side still has a stock shock. 
but we'll put all these little sensor wires back on like the brake line the brake pad sensor wire and the abs wire so we have to remove the interior trim to get to the top of the shock the shaft for the shock has to be locked in place so that Rob can loosen the nut that's on top inside the trunk. We remove the EDC again off the top of the shock. We're going to put a floor jack underneath the arm compress the spring so we can loosen this bolt easier. All right, let's just take this way we're out. Take the spring out. Supposedly, according to the instructions, you should remove this perch. A threaded perch so we can adjust the right height. And then there's a helper spring it basically locks in and this is just to keep this spring tight when the suspension drops below a certain height. I wanted to do 10, only 10 millimeters lower than stock. But okay. I don't know how we figured that out. We should have measured it. <laughs> Good job, Ryan. Good job. Hey, who's the mechanic? <laughs> Okay. I, I was a design major. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna guide the shaft through. We installed the high adjustable perch right here on the top. Installed the actual spring right below it. And then there is a spacer that connects the two springs together so they don't move around. And then this, this is the helper spring to always keep tension on the main spring. And then there's a little plastic Delrin or plastic perch on the bottom to center the helper spring onto the lower control arm. We're gonna be re reinstalling the headlight leveling switch. And that's it, we're gonna leave the sway bar off again until we finish the other side. Now we just gotta tighten the top bolt and we're good on this side. There's a box where this should be empty. So we're gonna have to remove that box to gain access to a grommet to run all the cabling. And we're gonna have to find a new location for the computer. The computer is supposed to go in that space. So we'll probably mount the computer somewhere in here. We're gonna be pushing this grommet through because that's where we're gonna be feeding the wires through for the EDFC. So right now, Brian's underneath the car. Luckily, he got the dirty end of the job to push this through. Oh We're just drilling four little holes for the wiring to come through. Keep going, keep it going, keep it going. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Hey, stop pulling. Why Oops. did you pull all the way through? Okay, thank you. Feed the little things through the grommet. Probably zip tie those right there. Probably run around this edge so it doesn't get. Probably gonna put it right there. It's like a good spot. Where it's gonna, I guess there's a little bracket here for the rubber grommet that actually hooks into there. So all I did was just push it in and it's ready to go. I assume it's probably gonna stick up like that as soon as Brian tells me the directions that he's reading so diligently. He's not doing some speed reading like I would be doing. And now we're gonna click the EDC wire to the EDC on the shock. We're probably just gonna zip tie it up here. And zip tie some wires, the wire to you know some crucial areas so it doesn't you know, get next to the dry shaft because this wire actually gets right next to the dry shaft and we don't want it to be, you know, rubbed off by the dry shaft. Now we're going to be doing the passenger side rear shock. So we've got to route it above the differential so we don't tear up the wire. And we're probably going to run it along the brake line, which is a perfect, 
perfect avenue for it. There's the ties on the on the wire against the brake line. So it keeps it away from the axle again. There's a plastic and felt under tray, which I think is to make the car quieter, um, which we have to remove because the wiring is going to run from the front to the back under here. Yeah, I think if you're doing this at home on jack stands, set aside a whole weekend. <laughs> so these are the zip ties that basically clamp on to sheet metal, clips into the metal, and then you just close the zip tie. I'll push it in there, and then the wire is going to go on the outside of it, and then we're just going to zip tie it on. There's, there's some clips yeah, yeah. and they're not screwed. Now, loosen this 10 millimeter interior trim piece because I think, I'm pretty sure the brake line goes behind this trim piece before it pops up right here. So I want to route the wiring along that brake line. It's one piece. Oh, yeah. It's never easy. Maybe I should have just gotten the club sports and called it a day. Yeah, someone had to get the EDFC or EDC or D whatever, D DC or whatever you want to call it. Something with the musical DLC. chairs. Clip it in right here. We're probably just going to run it along this brake line right here. And just zip tie it to that and we're good to go. We have to tap into the wiring on this side. The huh? wiring on that side, plus the battery. All right, this, this, is, a, this is Rob's uh, Jack Bauer moment. He's got to <laughs> cut the red wire and make sure that we don't all blow up. <laughs> <laughs> because right now we're going to crimp on a connector and this is for the computer that controls the KW shocks. Get to work, bro. God. Stop talking. God. We're going to connect the positive wire or the, the wire to the positive end of the battery terminal. And then the other end, we're going to connect to the wire that comes out of the DDC controller. And then we're going to Join them together with a fuse. Okay, click. You heard that. And then click this puppy in right here. Put that in there. And then we're going to put the fuse, which is a 10 amp fuse. Put that in there. And then we're going to put the rubber thing over this. And then the lid. And it clicks. Oh, no. It clicks. No, it no. doesn't. It clicks. No, it doesn't click. It doesn't want to click. It clicks. It clicks. Right here is the ground for the chassis of the car. So obviously it's getting some ground spots. So obviously that's a good spot. And we're going to connect the black wire, which is the ground wire for the DDC to that. Right there. So the problem is, we have to remove a black connector from that computer and the black connector, as you slide it up, hits sheet metal. No, this white yeah. connector hits sheet metal, which uh, the black connector is behind. I can't get to the black connector unless I remove this white connector. So we're going to loosen the We're going to loosen these bracket. Torx bit. So we have to disassemble the sensor, this CAN sensor that goes into the factory ECU. So what we did was we just pried it a little bit and we were able to slide it out. And now we have to de-pin the green wire and the orange wire out of this connector. There we go. We're going to be disconnecting this green wire and the orange wire from, from the factory can cable. And then we got to connect it to this plug, which is labeled pin one and pin two, which is going to connect to this plug. And then this part goes into the factory can and this plug connects to the DDC. Good times. On the connector Rob's got in his hand right now, there's a pin one marking and a pin two marking. Pin two is green, right? Pin two is the green cable we just removed. Okay, so pin two is green and we're gonna click it in hopefully. Oh yeah, it clicked. It clicked! So the brown cable from KW's computer uh -huh. goes to where the green cable was. Oh, right, well, we're halfway there. All right. Okay. okay. So this one goes back to pin two of this. No, pin one. 
Pin one, yeah. Yeah, or this guy. So the orange orange wire goes into pin one of the KW connector. Okay, and then the white wire goes to pin one of that other connector, right? Yep, pin, pin one, which is the white cable from KW, goes into pin eight yeah. on the factory. Got it. This one goes to this wire right here. Right? No, wait. Is that right? Yeah. So here was the factory harness. We plugged these two cables coming from the KW computer over here into the factory harness. These two cables were going into the factory harness. They're now connected. So we had the black harness. We took out two cables right here, orange and green. They went into this connector, which plugs into here. This goes down to this pigtail, and basically back to the computer. And we took the white and brown wires and replaced the pins on the factory harness. So what I suspect is going on, and we'll find out from KW, is the signals being intercepted by the computer, modified, and sent back. So it's, it's getting some sort of reading, interpreting it, and then probably sending something back so that the factory computer doesn't freak out. So this is to control the DDC controller. So I assume I need to splice into this wire. Yeah, although we should probably do it afterwards. With, with it, without it connected, yeah. Yes. So there's, there's a switch that lights up with three different colors to tell you which mode you're in. We'll show you it later. Once we have the Wi-Fi module, I can control the suspension with my iPhone. So the wiring from all the shocks comes in under this computer, which on the KW instructions is not there. I think this is actually part of the stereo system. So it comes out from underneath. We routed them around this little fan and here to the control box. And if it's all hooked up right, you'll get four green lights showing that each, each corner is properly communicating. There's a red power light and then there's a blue light indicating that the switch, which lets you select between the three modes, is, is operating correctly. We're just removing the bolts for the strut tire so we could add the, the bracket from the um, DDC immobilizer or EDC EDC emulation, module. emulation module. If you buy this DDC suspension for an Audi or a Volkswagen that has the adjustable dampers in Europe, the KW one is plug and play. Really? Yep. You just switch the shocks, that's it. So we're gonna be zip tying the wiring just to the strut tire brace so obviously it doesn't melt anywhere or basically rub against anything, so. I think we're both in agreement that one, you shouldn't attempt this in one day. You should set aside the whole weekend. Yeah, probably. I would be say safe. so. Yeah. To, to two that. days. Do it with a friend. Yes. Because and it would be really boring by yourself. And also probably impossible. Yes, I would say probably impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and just be really slow and really careful because this is complicated. Yeah, it's not I would not say it's your normal coilover install because of the fact that we have to run all the wiring and then removing pins from factory ECU wiring and just repinning them and then running power wires, and so I would not say it's for the novice, I guess, yeah. mechanic, would you not say? Yeah, I mean, I think if you've if you've done a suspension install before, you could probably do this, but if this were your first time installing a suspension, mm -hmm. you may think twice about it, or you should think twice about yeah. it. Yeah, I would say you better have some good skills and definitely have some proper tools to do a coilover stall or the yeah. DDC install for this E92. I think what's the hardest part for you? I, honestly, the hardest part for me was removing the stupid under, um, the under trays. Under trays because of the fact that the, my lift design wasn't conducive to removing the under tray. So that was a pain in the butt. And then, which I guess if you're if you're on jack stands, that's probably slightly more, easier. Slightly easier. Yeah. Um, and then, other than that. I mean, I would say probably the hard part was, it seemed like the rear driver's 
actual arm was giving us yeah, that would fail. trouble. But just have a pry bar and just be careful. I would say so too. That's it for this episode of Technique. Yeah. Have fun wrenching. Ha, ha, ha.